Welcome to Designer Diaries by Startup Fashion Week. I'm your host, Dee Silky, and joining me today is Leah Greenwood. Pleased to be here. Yes, pleased to have you here. So, Leah, I'm so excited. Uh, you work with an incredible organization called You for Change. And I'm actually a little bit familiar uh, with the organization. I've been to a couple fundraising events that you've hosted, and they've been such a success. And I'm so excited to learn more about You for Change and your involvement with the organization. Um, so I guess first, if you could explain to our viewers what You for Change is and how it helps give back to the community. Sure. So You for Change is a not-for-profit charity, and we are uh, in the west side of the downtown Toronto core. We cater to youth ages 16 to 29 who come from various marginalized uh, situations. It could be poverty, it could be uh, LGBTQ, it could be bullying at school, it could be family discourse, it could be any number of things. Um, and poverty seems to be sort of the, the common thread, but not exclusive to that. Um, our kids come from all cultural backgrounds, and so the energy in our studio is always great. Kids come into the studio, they, um, they have to basically apply to get in. It, we have small numbers for fashion, photography, DJ arts, and we've added to our core graphic design and web development. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it, the studio's been, or the program's been operational now for about 11 years, and we've had close to 4,000 kids go through the school, and we've su successfully graduated about 700. And with that, um, during their duration with us, we'll try and find internship opportunities where possible, or um, external mentors to continue their learning in that particular art that they've chosen. That's great. I'm so curious as to why You for Change has chosen the arts to really nurture these kids and not something like science or math or an outdoor activity or a sport. Why, why is the art so important to the development of these kids? Good question. They've selected it. So back in the foundational years, uh, when You for Change first started out in St. Jamestown, um, my predecessor and a group of um, frontline social workers met with these kids, new immigrant kids, in the basement of the apartment buildings in St. Jamestown. And they basically surveyed the kids. Mm -hmm. And originally it started off as a homework program where they would all get together with their homework gear and study together and learn English. And um, they were given the opportunity to have input into what would you really like to do? Well, they wanted to play, but they didn't want to play Monopoly or Scrabble or anything like that. They wanted something that they couldn't have. And so the team that was there made their dreams come true, and the charity ended up getting funded before it was even incorporated, specifically for the arts. And these particular arts weren't really attainable for the kids that were asking for them. And it kept the kids safe uh, within a program that gave them structure. And interestingly enough, at that point, the charity was really quite rich. And it had um, film, it had orchestra, it had dance, it had a broader scope of arts offered than what we're able to offer today. There you go. Amazing. So what would a typical day look like for one of these students who's involved in the program? So they may have a job, or they may be going to school. Um, they may just be at home waiting to do something. And then we offer our course once a week. Mm -hmm. And they come to our studio. Um, they may come early because they, have, they can just hang out. Uh, we are now also offering open studio time where they can book in to come and use the studio space. Origin in the last year, we or 18 months, we were sharing our space with another charity, so it made it really difficult for the charity for the space to be a drop-in space. But now, moving forward post-COVID, we want the space to ourselves, which really lends itself to almost like a clubhouse model, where the kids can come in, um, and I shouldn't even be using them as the main kids. Um, the youth can come in, use the space. Uh, book off time to do their DJ stuff for um, the graphic design and web development kids may want to have a small group that gets together to just kind of support one another. So now, the what used to be, we'll see you once a week, turned into, we'll connect regularly through Slack, we were doing um, Zooms with the kids just to keep them engaged. We had 
all sorts of variety of, of programs that we were delivering. And now with the new cohort starting in September, we've got classes going, we've got drop-ins happening, we've got lectures starting once a month with a variety of uh, guest speakers. And they, you know, it, it gives me a real buzz to see them just popping in and hanging out or using our equipment just to do their own Zoom events with, with, yeah. with wherever they need to do it. And um, we have one young fella who just got a job and he made a commitment to himself that he's gonna keep his apartment and, and keep food on the table and so he's not gonna be able to do you for change because he the courses are all in the evening. And so we said, well, fig you can figure it out. If you want this, you can make it happen. And he called us t this morning and said he's spoken to his boss and his, he's changing the schedule so he can st still stay enrolled. Okay. And so this is a story of a young fella as well who came to us last fall with a real kind of a, a tough story for him, having left his homeland, um, one of the tropical islands, and trying to find a place, and was living in a shelter for quite a while, and actually came to us when he was in the shelter, and was really struggling staying in the fashion program because he couldn't do math. Yeah. And if you can't figure out how to divide an inch, or divide a foot, or divide a meter, you can't really do garments. Yeah. And so, um, he was slipping from the course, he wasn't coming, and ultimately if you miss X number of classes you can't continue. So we found a way to get a tutor to come in to work with him to give him applied basic math. And he ended up being one of our shining stars at the end, and I was really hoping he was going to be part of the show, but his schedule isn't permitting him to kind of be there, but um, he, he ended up being our, um, kind of our favorite piece at the end. <laughs> yeah. um, with, feathers and silk and a dog and like he had he had put it all together and um, so he's come back, figured out his work schedule and is continuing with us in the photography program. So we were thrilled that he was able to advocate for himself. Mm -hmm. But he basically said he was able to do that because you for change gave him the because courage and the strength to do that and the will to want to continue to do his art. Yeah. That's awesome. So one of the youth that's uh, from You for Change that's going to be in this year's Startup Fashion Week actually designed this beautiful dress. Can you, t and you, you were telling me before we started filming that she's a textile expert and she's graduating from OCAD. Yeah. Can you tell us more about um, this youth? So um, this youth is Amy and Amy comes from a multicultural background. And I don't know her story in great detail, which is just fine. Um, and I was really, when I initially screened Amy, Amy had all the check marks mm -hmm. of not qualifying. Okay. Because she had everything kind of, um, she didn't meet our criteria. Okay. What would the that criteria? So the criteria could be anything from she's affluent, she's made it, in, the students made it into post-secondary and can continue to afford it, has found a career uh, direction and um, particularly through academics um, and there wasn't a particular story. Okay. And we've had kids you know, and Amy, Amy's here with us in our program because she was able to share with our, with our program manager her story. Mm -hmm. And I don't have liberty to share that at this particular point, but the story's there and it's quite an intense story. And um, I felt really glad that I was able to say, you know what, um, I'm the hard line, I'm usually the no person to make those tough decisions. I'm gonna let you talk to Perry because Perry's the one that will get you through the door. And so Perry and, and Amy spoke, and here she is. And so she is, she's at OCAD, and she's specializing in textiles, but it's not where her passion is. And so she was able to take her textile expertise and create and learn, and she came in halfway through the program. So she came into our level two in January and embraced and did a great follow through and produced three absolutely stunning garments. And this particular garment that she produced here is not something that she would typically learn from Chris, but what she learned from Chris Pinnell, Christopher Pinnell, who is our instructor and fabulous designer in Toronto for evening wear and um, wedding gowns and anything else you want to have created. Um, 
Chris helped him helped her with structure and measurements and um, uh, and even some of the finishing ideas of how to pull the garment together. So Amy, this is a knit dress and she was very, very thrifty in finding all of the wool that's used in it and from Value Village. So the, the dress itself cost pennies in yeah. garment fabric, um, but yet um, hours, hours of, labor, of and love. labor and love. And she'll say, oh, it just took a weekend. Well, you know, I don't know about that. But um, so she pulled this off and when we did our fashion show, at the end of the the year school year and the model came out wearing that it was jaw-droppingly beautiful yeah it sounds like if I'm reading between the lines here like she had already overcome a lot of um, struggle and to have you for change almost reward her for the work she did on her own and to validate that. her yeah and give her courage and strength to really excel and now she she basically has said to us that with this opportunity also of being in the in the fashion show that she can actually see how she has a vision yeah. beyond what she's going to do after school because she ended up taking a course because the fashion program wasn't available and it was mandated by her family that she as i understand it that she had to be in school in mm. some fashion um no pun intended um, but that she had to go to school, and the only way she could get into the arts was if she could, with the with the fabric. Wow. Because she couldn't get into the creative side, this creative side. Wow. So, so this she, has really opened up some doors. Huge doors, and, and she's one of many, and with the fellow that I spoke about earlier, if he could be in the show, it would really validate him yeah. significantly as well. And we have, we have a young guy who is going to be in the show, um, and he's once he got uh, worried that he's going to be in the show, he said, well, I have to create something new. <laughs> <laughs> Classic so, artist. <laughs> so I don't have his outfit to bring, but he's a good story too. Um, well, Leah, I just have uh, one more question for you today. What do you feel like the youth who are in your program and specifically who are in this year's Startup Fashion Week are really hoping to get out of this experience, aside from you know the validation and being able to see their work on the runway? Well, um, there'll be tears. Yeah. I can tell you that. There'll be tears, if not mine, certainly theirs, um, that they've made it. This is, a, this is a really big stage. It's not a you for change and Gucci stage. This is Toronto invitation. Mm -hmm. um, so the achievement for them is that they can do it. You know, sky's the limit. And we've opened the door. and they've embraced it and that's all we can do and and so for my kids that aren't in the show because they've opted not to mm -hmm. that's their choice as well mm -hmm. not my choice for them but it we have to honor their choice and so the ones that are going forward it is uh, going to be scary yeah. giddy fun um, humbling and because they're going to be basically parallel with some pretty big names that are growing out of the, the woodwork yeah. and going to be main staging for the first time. So this is really exciting for not only Youth for Change, but mostly for the youth that have the opportunity to be there. Hopefully the ones that you know decide not to do it, well, this will be their push for next year. I'm hoping. <laughs> it would be so great if we can be part of it again next year. Yes. <laughs> That's exciting. Well, Leah, thank you so much for your time My pleasure. today. Where can our viewers find and support Youth for Change online? Fabulous question. You for Change, uh, our website is www.youforchange.org and that's the letter U, not Y-O-U, the letter U. Um, we are on Facebook, You for Change. We do have Instagram, You for Change. Um, pretty straightforward. And check out our website. It's pretty cool. We've got um, a little bit of present and past on there. Awesome. So for those tuning in, thank you for watching this episode of Designer Diaries. Make sure that you follow Startup Fashion Week on Instagram. I'm your host, Dee Silky.